Hello everyone, welcome to Witstube. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking. Here is where I review cool tech like this portable heart monitor, smartwatches, smartphones, headphones, etc. So if you are into that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. Wyatt Home Tech sent me this value Pulsebit EX personal ECG tracker for my unbiased review. So let's get started. Right off the bat, this device should not be used for any medical diagnosis or condition and if you are someone who has a pacemaker or an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, you should talk to your doctor before using such devices. This product is intended for general wellness use just like as you do with your smartwatches. So with that disclaimer aside, let's start with price. At the time of filming this video, it's listed on Amazon US for $169.99. Keep in mind the price may vary at seller's discretion and depending on any discounts. By the end of this video, if you decide to get one for yourself, check out the links in the video description. Now in terms of unboxing, it's pretty good. There is a sleeve which houses the box with a magnetic closing lid. Inside the box, there is the Pulsebit EX ECG monitor. ECG or EKG are abbreviation of electrocardiogram and are used interchangeably. There is a one year warranty card with the customer support email address. There is a quick start guide entirely in English, quite legible, concise and easy to interpret. Moving further down in the box are all the goodies like the neck strap, a carrying bag, 10 additional reusable electrodes. This unit uses a micro D port both for charging data transfer to your PC which apparently you would never use if you have a smartphone as there is Bluetooth data transfer option, more to it later during the video. There is an ECG cable with the same micro D port. These reusable electrodes attaches to this ECG cable by a push lock mechanism. I'll show you the use of these electrodes later on during the video. Now let's talk about the Pulsebit EX unit itself. The first thing I noticed holding this device in my hand is, boy it's strikingly lightweight. You won't even feel holding it. For perspective, it only weighs about 53 grams. The overall design is sleek and functional. There is a 2.4 inch touchscreen color backlit display with two tactile buttons if you don't want to touch the screen. There is an on off button which is also used to exit to the main menu and this is the only button on the device. Now on the side there is a micro D connection port as mentioned earlier it is used for charging, attaching the ECG lid and data transfer to a PC. If you notice this silver metallic pads are the electrodes. On the front there is a round electrode, at the back there is a rectangular electrode and there is a stripe electrode on the side. There is a neck strap attachment in case if you have to carry this device with you. At the back there are a few regulatory information and there is a built in speaker which does beep when you take a reading. This device has a built-in rechargeable lithium polymer battery which I cannot really test as boy this battery is rated to do more than 500 checks per single charge which is mind boggling. So you ain't charging this device very often but don't worry there is a battery level indicator for you to know when to charge it if you have to. However it would take about 2-3 to three hours to fully charge this device. There is a built-in storage good enough to store about 130 second ECG readings but once you pair this device to your mobile phone via the WeHealth app, you can store unlimited number of readings. The dimension of this device are 88 by 56 mm and it's only 13 mm thick. This is very pocketable and lightweight. Well with all that said, let's talk about the user interface. Value, in my opinion did an exceptional job with its super simple user interface. Anyone can use this interface, especially our beloved seniors, for some of whom navigating around a complex interface can be a learning curve. But here you just press the button to turn the device on or off. The main menu consists of health check for user A which is myself and user B which is my wife. This dual user option is ingenious so you can easily track all the readings for two individuals from the history where all the readings are labeled with date, time and user. To go back just press the button. 
Last item is settings. Here you can either touch the screen to scroll or press the tactile arrow keys. The first option is Bluetooth, which will keep this device in the pairing mode. You have to download the vHealth app, which is available for free from Android Play Store or Apple App Store. Once downloaded, just go ahead and open the app and you get option to add a new device. Just go in the Bluetooth pairing mode on the Pulsebit EX and instantly you should see the device. I have already connected it. Once you click it, it will start loading up all the results. Now mind you, the results won't be automatically synced. Every time you want to sync any reading, you have to open the Bluetooth pairing mode on the device and follow this procedure on the mobile phone to load all the readings on the mobile phone, which is fairly quick and really easy. Once synced, you can view detailed readings which shows how that reading was taken on top right, which is really good, shows the time and date, the heart rate, how long was the ECG reading, which would be either 30 seconds, 60 seconds or 5 minutes. It also shows if the reading was regular or irregular and the entire reading graph, which you can space it out by 1 millisecond, 2 millisecond or 0.5 millisecond. And you can even export the entire reading to a PDF file format and share it with your doctor if you have to. That's about it with this app. However, under settings, you'll find all these options, which you don't have to use it on a regular basis and they're pretty self-explanatory. Okay, moving on, the Pulsebit EX device. Under settings, you'll find transfer option to PC under the Bluetooth. Now, with this option turned on, you have to plug this device with the provided charging cable to your PC or laptop get the Pulsebit app from the link shown on the display and this process is about the same as Bluetooth transfer options showed earlier. Going back under the settings, it's the ECG length which you can toggle from 30 seconds to 60 seconds and 5 minutes. Now the 5 minute ECG can only be measured with the external cable electrode. I mostly prefer 30 second or 60 second at the max. Next is user mode. In my case, it's dual, but you can have a single mode if you want. Language, which is English or Chinese. Brightness adjustment. This device can get pretty bright if you have to, to use it outdoors. Option to toggle voice on or off. Adjust date and time. Erase all data. Factory reset. Software update and about this device. Guys, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for sticking around. Please smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. Come on guys, just do it. It won't cost you a dime. With that said, let's do some test. Compare the results to my Apple Watch Series 6 ECG reading and wrap this video up with my final save. Alright, taking a reading is a piece of cake and pretty self-explanatory. The device itself guides you how to take a reading. When you click on either of the user, it gives you four options. Lead 2, where you have to hold the unit with your right thumb on the round electrode and place the stripe electrode on your right leg just above the knee. Lead 2 option, where you hold the unit and touch the stripe electrode to your left abdominal area just slightly off your belly button. Chest lead, where you have to hold the device and touch the stripe electrode to the breast line on the left side right where your heart is. And the easiest way, where you hold the device and touch the stripe electrode on your left palm. Let's take a reading with the lead one option for demo purpose. The device tells you to moisten the skin with water and touch the electrode gently. Try not to move as your movements can deflect the waves and try to be seated during the entire reading. The reading screen will display the waveform with the progress bar and the heart rate at the very bottom. At the very end, it will display the results. The results will be either regular or irregular. Your heart rate reading will be displayed on the center and you can either retake another reading or play the current reading. And under information, you'll get a brief breakdown of what regular reading is, 
Under irregular, it could be an ECG in an erratic pattern relating to premature ventricular contraction, also known as PVC, atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib, pause, which refers to a prolonged RR interval that may represent interruption in ventricular depolarization, ST segment, which represent interval between ventricular depolarization and repolarization, and this ST segment abnormalities, either elevation or depression, can relate to a variety of medical conditions. I don't want to go in depth about all these irregular wave patterns, but anything other than regular, just take that reading to your doctor and let your doctor interpret it for you with his or her medical knowledge. Please don't go on Google to self-interpret. Fast and slow heart rate range. Poor signal can be a low amplitude signal or noise. In that case, you can just change the method to lead to or chest lead and try it again. Lastly, unable analysis means ECG record is incomplete. Now let me show you how to take a reading with these reusable electrodes. So first take the ECG cable which has clearly indicated left and right cable. Here is where you have to attach this sticky electrode pad by just pushing them in. You don't need to worry about sides yet. Once attached peel off the sticker and place the electrode on the forearm right under the wrist. Left goes on left and right goes on right. Now plug the port into the device. Once you plug the cable into the device, it will only prompt you two options. The lead one, which is what I have currently attached for, or lead two, where you put the right lead on your right shoulder, right under the collarbone and left electrode on the left side abdomen, just off your belly button. Select the respective option and wait for the ECG reading. I find there is little to no noise or vibrations on the ECG waveform when you use these electrodes versus using the stripe electrode. Now I took few readings on my Apple Watch Series 6 and let's compare it to this Pulsebit EX ECG reading. So on the left hand side it's my Apple Watch Series 6 and on the right hand side it's the Pulsebit EX reading via the reusable sticky electrodes. And you can see they both look pretty much perfect. I mean they both are normal but the waveform is smooth except few stutters on the Apple Watch reading which is obvious because with a watch even when you try to be still there are some minor movements which can affect the smoothness of the graph. But overall the graph on the Pulsebit EX is bang on smooth. They both have 10 mm wave with 25 mm per second reading. This exported PDF file can be a real value to your doctor as they can check for any abnormalities and I have reviewed a lot of ECG smartwatches on this channel but by far the ECG reading from the Pulsebit EX will be my preferred choice over any smartwatch. So from now on, I'll use this Pulsebit EX to compare any smartwatch ECG reading. Before this, I used my Apple Watch Series 6 reading for baseline. For perspective, here's the ECG reading from my Apple Watch Series 6 versus the Fitbit Sense. And you can see even though the reading from Fitbit Sense is normal, but the graph does not look smooth at all. And that's because Fitbit Sense uses a 250Hz sensor versus the Apple Watch uses a 512Hz sensor. Okay, with all that said, here's my final verdict. Compared to all the smartwatch ECG sensors that I have used and reviewed on my YouTube channel, I can definitely recommend this Pulsebit ECG tracker. As you saw earlier on the sample graph where the Pulsebit ECG tracker graph is more robust and more importantly for the cardiac tracking such portable tracker makes more sense than a smartwatch because the user interface of this Pulsebit EX is super simple to use even who hasn't used any form of tech can easily use this device. It's very easy to take a reading as the device guides you how to take a reading and it gives you multiple measurement options with a variety of lead placement and even reusable actual ECG lead that you can either attach it on your chest or on your forearm right under the wrist. Exceptional battery life, ability to transfer reading to show it to your doctor and check your heart rate this device provides you with a baseline that your reading is regular or irregular. The only caveat is that it would be really nice if this device can also check the blood oxygen, also known as oxygen saturation.
These devices as said in the disclaimer are not used for medical diagnosis but rather provides your doctor a baseline of your cardiac health. Keep in mind this is a 2 lead ECG not a 12 lead ECG that your doctor may use to analyze the electrical event of your heart from different angles. Okay, that is it with this review. Check out the links in the video description if you want to purchase this Pulsebit EX ECG tracker and consider subscribing for such detailed tech reviews. I really hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please give this video a thumbs up and follow me on my other social media account for early preview to upcoming videos and free giveaways. Links are in the description of all my videos. Thanks so much for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.